Hey creators, today I'm going to show you the secret to texturing clothing. We're going to use Substance Painter for this, and you can use this technique on your own characters, but if you don't already have a character and you want to follow along with exactly what I'm doing, I've uploaded my project files to Production Crate, which you can download with just a free account. Now this video is all you need to learn this technique, but if you're not familiar with Substance Painter yet, I recommend going back to watch our Basics of Substance Painter video. Alright, with that out of the way, we're ready to jump in. So if you open up the file in Substance Painter, this is what you get. You'll notice that the character has a full skin material, but he's missing materials for his clothing. So we're going to texture that ourselves. You may notice that this is our Cyberpunk character from Render Crate, and he already comes with three texture variations for his outfits. But let's say we want to create more variety in our Cyberpunk city. So here it is. Here's the secret to texturing clothing really well in Substance Painter. The secret actually goes back to the steps before you even get to texturing. You need to create your model in a certain way to make texturing work for you. So let me show you what I mean. If I open up this file in some other program like Maya so I can look at the UVs, you'll notice that the model itself is actually constructed and modeled the same way you would put together clothing. So there's an edge running down all of the seams that would be there in real life if this was a real garment. And when I was UV mapping, I actually cut up the fabric into those shells as if it was a pattern of cloth. Normally on a 3D model, this would be kind of unnecessary. You wouldn't need this to be all cut up. This could be one piece. But cutting it up like this is the secret to being able to do a lot of cool tricks in Substance Painter. Another quick note, notice that I aligned the UV shells as much as possible to be vertical. And they could be horizontal too, as long as they're all going in the same direction. So let me show you why that's important. Jumping back over into Substance Painter, I'm going to use the female character really quick just to show you why that's important, because she has sleeves and it'll be a little bit easier to see why I set up the character this way. So I'm going to grab a fabric pattern with a really stark repeating pattern like this flannel. And when I lay it on the model, hopefully you can see why it helps to lay out the UVs this way. By default, the pattern is already running down the sleeves and along the different patches of the clothing in the direction it would go if this was a real garment. If my UV shells were angled in all random directions, like if I did an automatic layout, then I would have to spend a lot of time manually rotating the texture on each of these shells to get it to line up. But because the UVs are already laid out in the same direction, it just saves me a few hours of work. And this repetitive pattern shows why it's also important to cut up the shells in this seemingly over-the-top way. Kind of seems unnecessary to cut it this much until you start texturing and you realize that this actually looks like it's a bunch of separate pieces of cloth. And that's not the only trick that we're able to do with the UVs set up this way, but let's get back into the project and start texturing for real and I can start showing you some more advanced techniques. So when I was creating this character, I purposely didn't sculpt too much detail in ZBrush because I knew that I was going to create a bunch of different types of fabric, and if I sculpted too specifically to make it look like leather, for example, then this jacket could only ever be leather. So it's actually kind of under-detailed, and what I want to do is add detail back in right now in the texturing phase that I didn't put in during the sculpting phase, and here's how we can do that. So I'm going to click on the jacket material, and what I want to do is make these seams look a little bit darker and pushed in, a little bit sharper. And then I also want to add some wrinkles around the seams as if there's tension in the cloth where the different panels are sewn together. So let's start with the first layer. I'm going to add a new fill, and I'll call this Dark Seams. And I want to just affect the color and the height, so I'm going to turn off all of my other channels here. And just pick a darker color. It doesn't really matter yet what color you use because we're going to be changing it later. And let's also push the height in just a little bit right here. Okay, it doesn't look like much happened, but here's the trick. I'm going to add a black mask to my layer, and then I'm going to add a generator. And under the generators here, I'm going to choose UV border distance. So now if you all click on your mask, you can see what's happening. Is It's putting a white gradient around all of the UV seams. So I'm going to turn down the balance to kind of tighten that up and get it closer to just the seams. And I'll press M for material, and now you can see I've got a little bit more definition in the seams, probably actually a little bit too much definition. So we can add a blur to this now. So I'll add a filter, blur. It doesn't really matter what settings we pick right now. We're just kind of building the building blocks for this garment and we can change all this stuff as we choose which fabric this garment is going to be made of. Okay, let's add a new layer and I'll call this seam wrinkles. And for this one, I just want to affect the height channel. In the height, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to search for the word fabric. And now we actually get a few different options for wrinkles here. You can experiment with different ones, but I'm going to go with this one that's called creases soft. Again, it doesn't look like much happened yet, but we can increase the tiling and you can see we get some pretty intense directional wrinkles. Let's add a black mask to this layer. And just like we did with the dark seams layer, I'm going to add a generator and inside the generator, I'm going to choose 
UV border distance, and I can lower the balance to tighten that up. So now we've got wrinkles that are just in the seams. The next step is again to blur my mask to soften that edge. So I'll add a filter and choose blur. And you can see what we're getting at. We're getting a little bit closer to the effect. It's not quite right yet though. Let's change the balance of the height. So I'm going to click on the wrinkles layer, not the mask. And I'm going to add a levels adjustment. And let's change the affected channel from base color to height. And I'm just going to bring these two bottom sliders together to lower the contrast so it doesn't look so sharp and intense. You can experiment with bringing them closer together lower or higher. And now you can see we have a little bit more detail and definition in the fabric. From this point, we can adjust the layers we have to get the look we want. So if you go back to the seam wrinkles layer, you can see we have the creases soft, which is driving this wrinkle pattern. You can experiment with the other ones to see what they look like. This one's a little bit more random and less directional. It's called cloth fold medium. And this one called cloth fold large will give you a little bit more sparse of an effect. So don't necessarily pick the same one I'm choosing. Pick the one that looks most like the fabric that you're trying to recreate. I'm going to go back to creases soft. And the cool thing about this technique is we can paste these two layers to all of our garments because it's not a painted on texture. It's procedural based on the UV shells of the object. So I'm going to copy these layers and we can hide our jacket and let's jump over to the shirt layer and I'll paste these two layers and you can see we get the same effect. Let's do the same thing for the pants. Paste. Nice. So instant detail. Now before we start actually picking materials to put on these garments, don't forget that you can add even more detail as needed by just adding another fill layer and let's turn off everything except for the height. And maybe I want to add wrinkles to the entire pants model to make it look like he needs to iron his clothing. So I've just added cloth fold large. It's a little bit too intense though, so let's go back to add a levels adjustment to that layer. Change the effective channel to height, just like before. And then I'll bring these closer together to lessen the effect. So once again, don't just copy exactly what I'm doing. I'm just showing you the tools. Choose the patterns and the techniques and the settings that look best for your project. Okay, let's start actually choosing some materials for this now. So I'm gonna go back to the jacket. And I think I want sort of a black fabric or denim for the main body, I want leather or some sort of artificial leather for this strap down here maybe. And then because this is cyberpunk, I want to add some metallic bright colors. So let's start with the black fabric or denim. If I search for fabric in the smart materials, I have one called fabric baseball hat. I'll drop that on. This is an Adobe material, but depending on your version of Substance Painter, you may not have the same materials that I have. So just search through the library of default materials and use the ones that look best to you. If you have a subscription to Substance Painter, you should have access to the Adobe library, which has much more materials in it. And of course, there's also the Render Crate library, where we have a bunch of materials of our own too. Okay, really quick, I'm just going to adjust the colors. I'm going to gloss over some of the basics of Substance Painter because I'm assuming you guys know it if you're watching this video. But again, if you are brand new to Substance Painter, be sure to go back and watch our intro video. This material also has a wear layer, so let me just turn that up. And notice that we don't have our wrinkles in our seams, so just make sure that any fabric that you put on the model goes underneath your dark seams and your seam wrinkles. Looks like my dark seams are actually lighter than my fabric, so what I'm going to do is click on that layer and change the blending mode to multiply so that it's always darkening. And if it's too much, you can always turn down the opacity, just like in Photoshop, basically. Now that I've created that simple fabric material, let's add a black mask to it, and I'm going to confine it to just the parts of the garment that I want to be made of that material. You can do this using the Polygon Fill tool, which is right here, and set it to the UV Chunk Fill mode right here. And then you can just click on your actual UV shells to apply it to just that part of the model. All right, looking cool. Let's create a leather trim now. So I'll search for leather or maybe plastic or rubber, because it is cyberpunk, so synthetic materials are always better, right? This one's pretty cool, but it's not the color I want, so let me just adjust that color. I'm gonna go with like a black gloss. And maybe it's a little too shiny, so let's turn up that roughness a little bit. Okay, and again, I need to move it down below the seam wrinkles and the dark seams to make sure that those details stay on top. Now let's add a black mask, and I'm going to use that polygon fill brush to once again apply it to just the shells that I want to be made of that leather accent. I was going to put it down here, but I actually don't like that look, so I'm going to undo that, and I'll keep it just up here around the hood. All right, now I think I want something metallic and bright, so I think I'll use that same material. Let's drop it here underneath the dark seams. 
And on the plastic base, I'm just going to turn up the metallic so we get something really crazy. Maybe we can go with a neon metallic green. And just like before, I'm going to add a black mask and I'll use that mesh fill tool to apply it just to the parts of the model that I want. You can see I accidentally clicked on this shelf, so if that happens, just set the brush to black and now it'll subtract. Okay, looking good. I need one more material and that's the inside of the hood and the bottom hem. So for that, I think I want to make kind of a soft ribbed sweater so it looks soft and comfortable. Over here in the base materials, there's one called fabric linen that looks pretty good to me. So I'll drop that here underneath the dark seams and I'll increase the tiling. Next, I'm going to constrain it to just the parts of the model that I want by again, adding a black mask and using the polygon fill. Maybe I'll make it a dark gray. And now let's add those stripes. So on my fabric linen, my soft inner layer, I'm going to add a new fill and you can see it's here underneath the fabric linen layer. It's attached to it. I'm going to turn off everything except for the height and I'll search for stripes. Let's change the tiling and I can see that it's also going diagonal here at the bottom. So let's go to the rotation and change it to let's say 45 degrees. Okay. That's actually 90 degrees off from what I want. So let's keep rotating it to 135 to get those vertical stripes like a sweater. And now again, you can see the benefit of laying out the UVs vertically like this. All of our stripes are going to be going the same direction on every shell. And that saves me a lot of time. So I don't have to recreate the stripes for every shell and rotate them to the appropriate angle. One last step for this. It's looking a little bit sharp. So let's add a blur. So I'm going to go add filter, turn off all of the channels except for the height and I'll choose blur and let's set it to a really low number like 0.05. Okay, cool. It's maybe not the best looking jacket I've ever made, but the building blocks are there and we can make any changes we want at this point. So for example, maybe the colors just aren't doing it for you. Now that we have these three materials set up, it's really easy to go back in and change it. So maybe I'll make this into a gold instead of a green. And maybe I actually don't like this linen at all. Maybe I'd rather have some sort of leather. So what we can do is drag a leather on there and I can actually trash the baseball fabric. And then just like always, I'm going to add a black mask to my new leather and use my polygon fill to apply it just to the shells that I want to have that leather. So you can see how easy it is to change this up once you have the building blocks. Now another thing that this secret technique allows you to do is because we've laid out our UVs this way, it's really easy to do automatic stitching. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm on the pants material now and you can see I've got the dark seams and the seam wrinkles just like before and then I've applied just a single material to the pants just to get something on the canvas. If I want to add some stitches now, it's really easy. I'm just going to add a fill layer. This is going to go above my fabric. I'll call this stitches. Then I'll add a black mask. Inside the black mask, I'll add a generator. And inside the generator, I'm going to add auto stitches. Now, chances are it doesn't quite look right just by default. So we need to mess with some of these settings here. What I usually do is just start by turning all of the sliders down to make the stitches seem smaller and a little bit more natural. From there, you can make whatever adjustments you need, like increasing the path position will sort of push it away from the UV shell. And of course, you can adjust the stitch size, the stitch width and all that good stuff. Now, because it's procedural, I tend to find that there are some artifacts in some areas where it doesn't quite look right. And so what I like to do is add a new paint layer on top of the auto stitcher right here, set it to multiply, and this will allow you to remove stitches wherever they don't look good simply by painting black. Now in this case, if I don't want these stitches at all on these stripey parts, I can go to my polygon fill mode, go to black, make sure I'm on UV chunk mode right here, and then just click on the shells that I don't want to have stitches. That makes it really easy to clean up areas that look a little messy. Once you have the pattern down for your stitches, just go back to the material and change whatever you want. Maybe I want my stitches to be red and metallic, and maybe I want them to bump out, so I'll increase the bump. And once again, if I hadn't laid out the UVs in this way, this would take a really long time to set up. I would have to manually paint all of these stitches, but because I modeled the pants the way an actual outfit would be stitched together and then cut up the UV shells this way, it saves me hours of work when it comes to texturing. So that's the true secret to texturing cloth is actually modeling and UV mapping properly. Now as a quick added bonus, we can actually adapt this technique for the wrinkly seams to create really cool designs and patterns and patches and other cool details in our clothing. So just like this part right here, let me show you how I did this. So I'm inside my jacket material and just on the very top, I'm going to add a new fill 
and I'll call it patches and just make it whatever color you want. Now let's add a black mask to the patches layer and then just manually paint whatever patch design you want. I'm going to use this clip art from Graphics Crate. For this technique to work, we also want to go back to our layer and just slightly increase the height until we see it bump out just a little bit. Now that we've got that, we can go back to our layer mask and add an anchor point. This anchor point is going to allow us to create new layers that will reference whatever design we painted here. So anything below this anchor point, in this case it's the fill with this skull on it, can be referenced on layers above. So what does that look like? Well, I'm going to add another new fill and I'm going to turn off all of the channels except for the height. In the height channel, I'm going to add one of my fabric wrinkles from before. So if I type in fabric, I'm going to use creases soft. Let's increase the tiling. And again, it looks really crazy right now, but don't worry, we're going to fix it. First, let's name this patches edge wrinkles. And we're going to add a black mask. And inside the black mask, we're going to add a fill. And inside of the fill, we're going to click right here. And instead of choosing a pattern, we're going to go to anchor points. And I'm going to look for my patches mask. Now, on my project, I have a ton of anchor points going on. You won't have this many if you're following along with a brand new project. But luckily, you can see as I roll over, it lights up the layers that are being referenced. So I'm just going to go to the one that says patches. And I can see it is referencing this one, which is the one that I want. So that's a little tip about anchor points. If you have a million of them, it actually lights up here, makes it a lot easier. So now that you can see that my edge wrinkles are now confined to just the shape of the skull. So we're getting closer to what we want. It's at least respecting and recognizing that mask. Above the fill layer, I'm going to add a filter. And inside the filter, I'm going to add a high pass. And this is where those of you who have seen our previous Substance Painter videos are probably getting deja vu because I use this anchor point technique with the high pass filter all the time. It's super powerful. But what the high pass does is it creates a mask that looks like this. We get a white gradient on one side of the edge and a black gradient on the other. I want these wrinkles to mostly exist on the outside edge of my design. So to achieve that, I'm going to go add a levels adjustment and I'll press invert and then I'll turn down this slider until most of it is black, just about the halfway point. And you can see now we just have a white gradient around the edge of the skull. And you can see it looks like there's wrinkles just around the outside. It's a little bit too sharp and perfect though. So let's add a filter and choose a blur to blur the mask and kind of spread it out. And again, now we have the building blocks so we can start to make adjustments to make it look a little bit more realistic, but it's basically ready to go at this point. All we have to do is maybe go to the high pass. We can adjust the radius to spread out the wrinkles or tighten them up, whatever looks good for your project. And if the wrinkles themselves are a little bit too intense, we can click on the patches edge wrinkles layer and I'm going to add a levels adjustment. The affected channel is going to switch from base color to height. And just like before, we can fiddle with the intensity of this height channel. All right, cool. And that's basically how I made all of these outfits. So now if you want to add to the cyberpunk characters pack, you can do it yourself and make an entire cyberpunk city. So just to recap, we created the dark seams layer. We added wrinkles to the seams. And then I just started slapping various cyberpunk looking materials to different UV shells. And because we did the secret UV mapping technique, there wasn't a whole lot more work to do. The UVs did most of the work, making it look like it was garments stitched together with different panels of fabric. So if you want to try that yourself, go up on productioncrate.com and download the free project files and follow along. And if you missed it, we already did a video on the channel where I showed you how to make these cyber implants in the skin. It may not seem like it just by looking at it, but these are actually 100% textured on. None of this is modeled. So if you want to learn how to do that and add your own cyber implants to these characters, go check for our previous video on the channel. And as always, if you make your own cyberpunk characters using this technique or cyberpunk outfits, be sure to tag us on Instagram with it or share it on the Discord. Alright, later creators.